Welcome back to the Bluegrass on this beautiful September 1st evening. We had a big video uh, adventure planned for earlier in the day, guys, and some mice got into my ATV and chewed up the wiring harness. So George and I <laughs> have redone a whole on Honda ATV wiring harness today. And let me tell you, it was, uh, it was, it was a pretty big job. Uh, whoever does that for a living, guys, I used to think dog groomers had the hardest job in the world. I have now decided that whoever works on wiring harnesses has the hardest job in the world. I do not recommend that as a project, so make sure that you clean your four-wheelers well when you come home from adventure, because what had happened is a bunch of um, like a mud and sticks had got up inside my four-wheeler and a mouse had made our home in it, and I guess they just uh, you know were partying one night and decided to chew up uh, my whole wiring loom. So, so that's what I've been doing all day. Anyway, well, it's a, it's a nice evening, and so we're going to do an adventure. We're just going to kind of do a nighttime adventure, so I don't know how long you guys are going to be able to follow along, but as long as there's light, we're going to be doing some fun stuff. Uh, we have the new adventure canoe on top of the truck. We have your name, of course, Bear. We have Bo. Oh, my gosh, what are you doing, Trucker? And we have an awesome little German short hair puppy. Uh, German short hair pointer puppy named uh, Tracker. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this uh, kayak down, or we're going to get this new canoe down, and then we're going to just take a little walk with these dogs, kind of uh, air them out a little bit and let them, uh, let them run some energy off. Get them to get in this canoe and act like they've got just a little bit of sense, not uh, dump us out into the pond or anything. Now this one on a canoe, I looked at a lot of canoes, guys. And I ended up just calling up to uh, Canoe Kentucky, which is a shop up in Frankfurt. And I asked them, I said, what, what kind of canoes do you guys use? And they were like Winona. And so I went up there and they hooked me up with this Prospector 15. Uh, and it's uh, awesome. We couldn't be happier with it. It's uh, super light. George and I can uh, haul it around. We just had it at the river the other day. And uh, we kind of portaged it, or whatever the Canadians say, <laughs> a pretty good ways. And it was easy to carry, wasn't it, Georgie? Yeah. All right, well, we, we're going to leave this uh, canoe here. Uh, we're going to take off walking up through the field, let the dogs follow us, probably throw some dummies, and uh, let No Name serve as a mentor. And then when I feel like they're pretty calm, we'll come back down here and uh, we'll see how this canoeing goes. Okay, on tonight's walk, we're primarily interested in Bo. Uh, these guys here, they've been over to the farm a million times. Uh, Bo, this is about her third or fourth time, and she's done pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, I'd had to come over here by myself, so I couldn't get her on video. And her owner is really worried that uh, when they get back to Henderson, she's going to take Bo over to her dad's farm, and Bo's going to run off, and she's not going to be able to get her back. <laughs> so, in this little walk, we're just going to kind of keep an eye on this Fox Red Lab here. And uh, if, if, we, if we're lucky, we'll go with that double finger cross, you know. If we're lucky, the dog won't run off, and her owner will watch this video and end up with some good confidence because a whole lot of uh, dog training guys just boils down to confidence if you go out on an adventure like what we're going out on right now and you feel like it's going to work out the way it's supposed to then 99 percent of the time it works out the way it's supposed to if you go out and you're apprehensive if you're nervous if you're full of anxiety then that uh, that transfers right to the dogs you know i can tell uh, when, when, when we go out on adventures and I've got somebody with me, you know, I can tell whether or not their dog's going to have a hard time by whether or not the person is having a good time, a hard time, right? If the person is chill and relaxed, the dog's going to be chill and relaxed. And if the per person is worried and nervous that something bad is going to happen, then <laughs> Uncle Stoney has to get involved every single time. Because uh, sure enough, the dog starts darting off or they don't want to come back or, you know, whatever, okay? So the main thing I want you to take from tonight's little uh, adventure is that George and I, uh, we're just walking along like uh, everything's normal, you know. I'm not even watching these dogs very often. What I'm doing is I'm putting out into the universe my idea that these dogs are not going to run off, okay. And I'm hoping that somehow or another the vibes that I'm putting out in the universe are going to get transferred over there to those dogs. Because, guys, that's ultimately what it boils down to. Are you projecting what you want to see? Because you can come out here and if you're nervous, you can have the best little treat in the world. It ain't going to do you that good, right? If uh, you come out here and uh, you're trying to be Mr. Electric Collar Trainer, but you're real nervous, that ain't going to work out either. You're going to shock your dog. Hell, it's liable to run to the next county, okay? What works is having a good, positive mental attitude, you know? 
you got to come out here and just say, look, we're going to go do some fun stuff. And uh, if you guys will come be still and have good manners, then you'll get to keep on doing fun stuff until it's time to go. But then when it's time to go, if you want to be able to come back tomorrow, you're going to have to come with me. You know, if these dogs uh, make me chase them all over this farm, then what do you think the likelihood of me uh, <laughs> bringing them out here tomorrow is? About zero, you know. So we're all about projection, aren't we, Georgie? Yep. Throw that dummy for that other dog. Wait till she sees you. There you go. Oh, good dog. We kind of throw these dummies around. Let them have a good, have a good time. Look at No Name. He'll trip out trying to get both of them. <laughs> Bo will probably be happier just to aggravate No Name uh, than pick up her own dummy. There she goes, though. Good. Pick it up, Bo. Good boy, No Name. Woo! Ready? Oh, very nice. Very nice. Hope oh, is uh, a bear going to get it? Dang. So, look, there goes a rabbit. There goes a rabbit, guys. So, bear, the little black lab there, the real good looking one, like, uh, um, he's been here for a fairly good time, fair, fairly good amount of time. And so I was talking to his owner the other day, we were talking about fetching, and uh, she was asking me how I was going, and I was like, well, let me, let me kind of give it to you this way. When we're outside, he shows no interest in fetching, but then, uh, since I was talking to her via her online journal, uh, I took a picture of him holding a frisbee in his mouth. And so, <laughs> bear fetches great as long as he's in the air conditioner, and the distance for fetching is from my computer to my hallway, okay? which is about nine feet. He will literally aggravate you to death with a Frisbee because he wants to make those nine foot air conditioned retrieves. So like every once in a while, like, you know, tonight you might see him run over there and act like he's going to pick it up. But uh, since it ain't air conditioned out here, I doubt he's going to make too much effort to bring it back. Very good, Mr. No Name. Good. <laughs> no names like I'll take both <laughs> come here uh, now some of you guys will feel sorry for mr. no name because Bo is aggravating him well listen that's no names job is to be a mentor and to let these other dogs aggravate him and trust me when he was little he used to aggravate his mentor Henry uh, just as much as anybody's aggravating him now if you don't believe me go back to last year's videos and you can watch him uh, <laughs> aggravate Henry about to death Very nice. Ah, Bo got it. No, name got it back. <laughs> no name's like, look, dude. Okay. <laughs> Here, give us that one, Trudy. Very nice. The key, guys, is just to kind of keep them moving. Don't give them time to really get into much in the way of conflict. Very nice. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Very nice. Now, what we're doing here, guys, uh, it ain't got anything to do with formal retriever training, okay? Uh, and, and my dog, No Name, he's not supposed to be a formally re you know, trained retriever. He's a mentor dog. His job is to help me at my kennel socialize dogs and make sure that they don't run off when we're out here on these puppy-sized adventures, okay? So every time that uh, people see me throwing dummies in a group of dogs, especially with my good retriever, Henry, or my good retriever, No Name, they send me emails telling me how, Stoney, you're not supposed to be doing that. You're supposed to be focused on running 400-yard blinds and, and, and running straight lines and, you know, this and that and the other. I'm like, look, guys, you, you, you misunderstand the point of my dog's job. My dog's job is simply to serve as an example for these other dogs that come here to my kennel, you know. We're going to come out to the farm and we're going to go adventuring, we're going to go hiking, biking, four-wheeler riding, boating, okay? And I have Mr. No Name and Henry to show these other dogs how they should behave. And what we want is we want them to be friendly and we want them to be outgoing and we want to make sure that they don't run off. Very nice. Mm. 
Ugh. All right, now we're gonna get up here. Guys, this is corn over here. We'll, we'll go ahead and make the turn and I'll uh, show you what's in this other field real quick. Then we'll head back up to the pond and see if we can't get a little canoeing in. <clears throat> okay, over here we have a hemp field. Okay, and this hemp over here is destined to be turned. Go ahead and walk up in there, cameraman. I'm gonna stay back here so the dogs don't get in the, in the field. Uh, but this hemp here, guys, is uh, destined to be made into medicine. Right. It looked like we were gonna have a good thing going in Kentucky with the hemp, but uh, like uh, ah, the government stepped in and they changed the amount of acceptable THC in the hemp and uh, now the farmers are afraid to grow it because they're afraid they'll have to destroy their hemp crop over a few uh, tenths of a percentage of uh, THC which is absolutely ludicrous. <laughs> Look, Bear's got it. <laughs> Bear almost decided he was going to fetch, and then he picked it up, and he thought, man, it's awful hot out here. Oh, and look, Bo got it for one second. <laughs> oh, look at those nerds. Hey, come on, work it out, guys. Oh. Very good dogs. Oh, watch out, Bo. <laughs> now, remember that rabbit we saw earlier? What do you think's going through that rabbit's mind? Do you think it's feeling a lot of relief because it uh, kind of realizes that Uncle Stoney has brought out a whole bunch of uh, fancy suburban dogs that don't need to eat rabbit for dinner? <laughs> you know, oh my gosh, people and coyotes. Oh no, I'm going to die. And now he's sitting over there. <laughs> looking at these fat labs going uh look they don't need to eat me they got some fancy dog food at home they're probably all eating raw very nice dogs now what i want you to notice as we come over the hill and uh, start down to the pond is that i'm sure you can hear my microphone being blown out by all this panting okay what else you'll notice is that uh, these fatigue meters are really hanging out that's important for tonight's uh, session because a tired dog is a good dog and a good dog sits still in the canoe, okay? So <laughs> the whole reason we took this big walk was to reduce the chances of me and Georgie getting dumped into the pond by a squeaming, squirming dog. So we'll see if that works out to our advantage. But what for sure is not gonna work out to our advantage is this. As soon as we get down there, these hot dogs are gonna dive right off into the pond and get wet and muddy. So one way or another, I'm gonna end up wet and muddy, whether I fall out of the canoe or uh, these dogs just get in my canoe uh, and uh, slobber and, and, and shake all over me. And we just got that canoe the other day too. You know how it is when you first get something new, you wanna keep it clean. Uh, our very first outing, canoe's already all scratched up and dirty. Luckily, I'm just going to put that on the owner's bill <laughs> and we'll head up there and get us a new canoe. All right, Georgie, run on up to the truck and grab that mallard dummy and start throwing it out in the pond a little bit. Let No Name get cooled down. <laughs> I've got to send No Name off. Him and Bo, 
they're about to, to blow my eardrums out with this panting, you know. Um, but I just wanted to review a second about the, the basic format of our adventure sessions. You know, what we do is we load the dogs up, and then of course, while they're in the car and we're going to wherever we're going, they start to get riled up, you know. A big mistake people make when they go out to train or they go out on an adventure is, uh, you know, they get the dogs in the car, they take off driving, and then they want to get the car stopped to get all their gear out, get set up, whatever, and then go to, you know, doing some training. Well, listen, guys, you're fighting your dog's natural energy flow when you do it that way. How we do it is we, we you know, we take off in the truck and the dogs start getting excited. Then we get here and we let the dogs run and we let them play and we let them burn off some energy okay we try to get those fatigue meters hanging out low so that we know that the dogs are more likely to be able to show good impulse control and good attention span okay now so once i've got a dog and we've burned off that excess energy and i've got their attention and uh you know they they're, they're at a kind of an energy state where they can show good impulse control, then we can teach them something that requires extra amount of concentration, okay? Like riding in a canoe. You know, riding in a canoe is not like riding on a kayak. It's not like riding in a john boat because a canoe is inherently less stable than either of those two other platforms, okay? So uh, we're gonna get the we're gonna get the canoe out and uh, we might switch to some GoPro footage here, but uh, we're just gonna kind of paddle around and uh, you know, one of a couple of things is gonna happen. Either we're gonna have made these dogs tired enough and done a good enough job at the kennel so that they'll sit still relatively in the canoe so we can paddle around and, and have a good little, good little trip, or uh, they're gonna be still squirrely and they're gonna dump us, right? If they dump us, we're just gonna drag the canoe up here, uh, get the water out of it and start again, okay? That's the primary thing that you have to understand. When you go for your training sessions, guys, it's, it, you just don't know how it's gonna work out. So enjoy the process. I'm gonna have fun time uh, with George in his canoe one way or another. If those dogs dump us out, you can bet I'm gonna try to dunk his head under the water or something else fun, right? Okay, I'm gonna make it a good night regardless of whether the dogs sit in the canoe properly or not. Because if they don't set in it properly tonight, then they will tomorrow night, or the night after, or the night after, or the night after, okay? And that's all you have to keep in mind, guys, is enjoy the process, and then if you have to do something a couple of extra times, it's not like, you know, it was a burden. It, 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 it turned into, uh, you know, it turned into a fun experience, okay? And that's really the key with dog training. There's no end point with dog training, not really, okay? It's just you and the dog out trying to have a good time, and uh, before you know it, you make a little bit of progress each week and you're ready to like uh, do whatever you want like we're trying to get the dogs in the canoe just to make a couple of trips around the pond okay well then we'll do two or three trips around the pond then we'll go to the river we'll do a couple of miles on the river we'll, then we'll go down the lake we'll do the whole circuit around the lake and after that we could we could canoe anywhere we could canoe down to new orleans if we want but always keep that in mind guys enjoy the process set reasonable goals and as long as you focus on making incremental progress those goals will just kind of get fancier and fancier and more complicated uh, as a natural progression of you enjoying the process okay so that's the main thing i want you to take from all my training videos which is just enjoy the process all right, so guys, we're going to push off here and we're going to try to stay close to the bank because it uh, turned out it was going to be hard to use the GoPro and paddle. I probably should have thought about that in the beginning. Okay, so uh, this could turn into a nice little project here or it could turn into another microphone eating session because I go through these microphones pretty quickly whenever we're doing water work. All right, so we made it all the way to the end of the pond, and so far, no one has jumped out of the canoe. My cameraman got stuck over here in the mud, <laughs> so we don't have much in the way of footage of going <laughs> down to that end of the pond. So we're just kind of uh, like, like hang out right here in this area for you so that you can see that these dogs have settled down. Now, Bear, being a, kind of an English show variety lab, he's naturally pretty calm, and it was easy to get him to settle down. Tracker is one of the most high-energy German Shorthair pointers I've ever seen. You can go back to about four videos uh, back, about a month ago, when Tracker first got here, and you can see him jumping around and being crazy and stuff. 
and uh, you would have never thought he was going to be able to sit in a canoe or a kayak or a john boat and he's doing perfectly with all three Bo, Bo's pretty high strung like a lot of those fox red labs and I knew we would have a lot of trouble with her so of course we exercised her we ran off that extra energy and then if you'll notice uh, I got her kind of tethered in here so she can't uh, so she can't move around much now that's a good idea guys if you have a pretty good stay with your dog that's the literally the worst idea in the world if uh, your dog's not tired and it doesn't have a pretty good stay because if they're tethered and they jump out of the canoe then they just turn the canoe over and you and the dog both drown okay <laughs> so for you eagle eyes out there because there's always a few eagle eyes in the comment section you know uh, for you eagle eyes who say stony what about uh, tethering the dog i'll just go tether mine no it doesn't work like that you don't just see some little thing that we do and then go do that you have to do everything that we do so you have to work on getting your dog to come to be still to have good manners then when you take them on your adventure you have to make sure that you regulate their energy properly get them good and tired get that fatigue meter to hanging out and then you can put them in the canoe and you can tether them, but you don't actually tie the tether. If I reach back there right now, I can slide that tether right off of that portage yoke, okay? So I guess that's one of those things. What do they, what do they say? Do as, I, do as I tell you to do, not as you see me do, or something like that. Well, that's what I'm telling you about this dog training. Very nice. Watch out, knucklehead. <laughs> I just ran over no name. Good boy. Uh, now, one of the things I want to caution you about, this will make you mad uh, when you first start working on canoeing with your dog. If your dog starts getting bored or tired of being in the canoe and you're starting to try to skirt the bank, if the dog sees the bank as being close and accessible, that's when they're really likely to jump out, you know. Uh, so a lot of times you'll get done with your little kayaking or canoeing uh, practice session and right about the time you get done the dog starts looking at the bank <laughs> Bo sits uh, and when they start looking at that bank you better get back there and get onto them a little bit make sure they settle down because what they're thinking about doing is getting out of the canoe on the bank and back in the car. <laughs> we've, had it to, we've had it happen to us a lot of times, guys. So always, at least out of your peripheral vision, keep an eye on the dog as you approach the bank because you can have a great session end up uh, not so great if you make a mistake on that last 30 seconds of getting up to the boat dock or up to the bank of the pond, the river, or the creek. All right, now of course, if you have a daughter after your dog training session, She's going to be like, well, Dad, is there any room in the canoe for me? <laughs> I'm sorry that I put the dogs out here for you. It's okay, Daddy. <laughs> Bye. Now we'll come back towards Mom. Ahoy there, maybe. <laughs> Well, hello, Bo. How are you doing? Look at Bo. <laughs> hey, that's funny too, guys. You never know. Some of them, they'll act like they don't want to do something or act like they're not happy about doing it. Uh, and then they turn around and, and, and want to do it again. I mean, dogs are funny. You just never know what you're going to get. That's why you, you, know, you just have to go into each adventure with a positive outlook. Just like you have to go out with your off-leash training and keep a positive outlook, guys. <sighs> Everything boils down to confidence in life. It doesn't, it, Charlotte. Uh -huh. <laughs> Watch out, no man. This is a race to the death. I wish God could hold her back. We made it the whole night without no sinking as if she's shaking it. <laughs> 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 